Hello everyone and welcome to this dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Brad. I'm an education specialist for the Detroit Zoological Society and today looks a little different than normal. Today I'm actually in the Matilda R. Wilson free flight aviary at the Detroit Zoo. And you might be wondering why am I here today? Well, I wanted to bring you all along on an adventure today to one of my favorite spots at the zoo. The free flight aviary is an immersive habitat where we can see birds flying around in a habitat that looks a lot like where you would find them in the wild. So please come along on this journey with me and we're gonna do some bird watching. As I like to call this segment, bird watching with Brad. But first, let's take a look at some vocabulary words and some of the different skills we're gonna be working on today. So our vocabulary words for today, the first word is dimorphic, which means that there's two distinct forms of something. So one thing could look two different ways. The next word is plumage, which is a way to describe feathers that cover a bird and their size, their shape, their color, the overall pattern of the bird's feathers. And the last word is juvenile, which refers to something that is young. The skills and concepts that we will be working on today are ecological knowledge, because we're going to learn about some of the birds that are in the Matilda R. Wilson free flight aviary. And our activity will be relating to humane education, which we will get to later. Let's use this bird identification sheet that can be found when you visit the Detroit Zoo. Let's use color, size, and where we find the birds to help us identify who they are. Now that we have an idea of some of the vocabulary words and some of the different skills we're working on today, let's take a walk through the aviary. So when we first enter the aviary, we're going to see this large tree and this water feature, but immediately what I saw was actually these two birds right up here. The jambu fruit dove is a small, colorful forest dove that inhabits mangrove swamps and rainforests in the countries of Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Brunei. If you listen closely while in the Matilda R. Wilson free flight aviary, you can hear their soft cooing. They're usually described as shy birds who spend their time roosting, nesting, and feeding, and usually you will only see them alone or in pairs. They are sexually dimorphic, which means males and females differ in appearance. Think about cardinals or red-winged blackbirds that are common in North America. Males have a crimson face, a white chest, and a pink patch near their throat, while the females have a light purple face and a green chest. The jambu fruit dove usually lays one or two eggs, and the egg is cared for by both the male and the female for two to three weeks. The parents never leave the egg unattended. One will always stay in the nest while the other is looking for food. Here you can see the appropriately named Scarlet Ibis. The range of the Scarlet Ibis is very large and colonies can be found throughout areas of South America and the Caribbean islands. Adult plumage is virtually all scarlet. The feathers might show some various tints and shades, but otherwise they're completely red except for a small tint of black on the tips of their wings. Currently, you can see some juvenile scarlet ibis here at the Detroit Zoo, but they will look a little different than their parents. The juvenile plumage is a mix of gray, brown, and white. As they get older, they will develop their adult plumage. They develop this deep scarlet color because of their diet, which is rich in crustaceans like shrimp, crabs, and crayfish. Their distinctive long and thin bills are used to probe for food in soft mud or under plants. The scarlet ibis is a very, very social bird, unlike the jambu fruit dove who likes to stay alone or in pairs. They're very community-minded when they search for food and even in protection of young. Uh, they live in large flocks, usually of 30 or more, and when they are building their nests, they stay close together. They try to arrange their nests in close proximity or in the same tree. When you first enter the free flight aviary, make sure to look up in that large tree. That is where you will likely find the scarlet ibis. Next on my journey through the free flight aviary, I ran into this guy. This is the spur winged lapwing. You will see them running around on the ground. Um, they are a type of shorebird. It's really easy to recognize the spur winged lapwing because it's, uh, it's got this unmistakable look. It, they have these very long legs. Um, they have a black crown on their head um, and these red eyes. Um, the, the, um, and they also have this very striking uh, call. 
almost kind of sounds like an alarm clock going off. This species, they prefer marshes and similar freshwater or wetland habitats. Uh, the food the spurwing lapwing eats are insects and other invertebrates that it picks up off the ground. The spur-winged lapwing also gets its name because it has these small little claws on their wings, which they'll sometimes use uh, as uh, a way to defend themselves or their nest from animals. And now as we're looking at this lapwing, look at this other bird over here. This bird right here is the gray-capped emerald dove. Though it has lots of other names, it can also be known as the common emerald dove or the, the green dove or the green-winged pigeon. Uh, they're pretty common uh, throughout uh, India and Southeast Asia. The gray-capped emerald dove can be identified when you're in the free flight aviary by its iridescent green feathers and that gray cap that it looks like it has on its head. When you are in the Matilda R. Wilson Free Flight Aviary, and if you are looking for the gray capped emerald dove, my suggestion is to look down. They are terrestrial birds. They like to spend a lot of time on the ground. That's where they can find a lot of the food they eat. We have time to look for one more bird while we are here in the Free Flight Aviary. And look who it is. It is the boat-billed heron. As you can guess, this heron gets its name from the massive, broad, scoop-like bill. Birds are really neat because you can look at their feet, and get an idea of where they live and what they do, or maybe even what they eat. And same with their bills. You can look at the shapes of their bills and try to guess, what do I think this bird eats? So let's look at our boat build heron and think, what kind of food might this bird eat? Boat build herons feed on shrimp and small fish. Or a lot of times they'll hang on the branches of the mangroves and then stand over the water and wait for food to swim by. And then when it does, they can scoop it up with that large bill. There are so many birds in the free flight aviary that it's hard to cover it in just a single section of bird watching. So we're actually going to break up the free flight aviary into multiple sections of bird watching. But before we end this, I know what you're thinking at home. Brad, this is amazing. These birds are so amazing. But what can I do for birds at home? Well, let's look at this activity for how you can help birds in your own backyard. Transparent glass is invisible to both humans and birds, but humans can use door frames and other visual clues to anticipate the presence of glass and avoid a collision. Birds, of course, don't share this ability. They perceive reflected images as literal objects. It is estimated that over a million birds die from bird collisions each year. We can help prevent bird collisions by creating a bird decal. Most birds will avoid patterns or shapes on glass. The materials we're gonna to need today are a piece of paper, a pencil, scissors, and if you wanna color it, you can use some crayons or markers. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to draw our bird decal that we're gonna cut out. You can draw anything, you don't have to draw a bird if you want, but I chose a bird. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut out our bird decal. Once we have our bird decal cut out, we can now color it if we want. So I'm going to grab some crayons, I'm going to add some color to it. Here it is, my finished anti-bird collision decal. This can be hung up in your window. Like I said, to make it most effective, you'd want to use multiple shapes or decals and space them at the very most four inches apart. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this dose of virtual vitamin Z. My challenge for you is next time you're at the Detroit Zoo, spend some time in the free flight aviary and listen to the birds. See if you can find all the different species that live in here and just take some time to observe their behaviors.
Uh, until next time, you can always visit our website at DetroitZoo.org for more virtual content. And otherwise, I will see you all at the next Birdwatching with Brad session in the Matilda R. Wilson Free Flight Aviary.